Vedam Rajam Suranamapi Jadipatyam Sanjaya Uvacha Eva Muktva Krishi Kesham Guna Kesha Parantapaha Nayotsya Iti Govindam Uktva Tushnim Babhuvaha Tarubacha Krishi Keshaha Prahasanni Vaparata Sena Yoru Hayor Madhye Vishidantam Idam Vachaha Shri Bhagavanu Vacha Ashokshanan Vashokshaswam Pradnyavadamscha Bhashase Gatasuna Gatasumscha Nanusho Chanti Pandita Natve Vaham Jatunasam Natvam Neme Janadhi Paha Natai Vanapa Vishyamaha Sarve Vayamatav Param Dehi Nosminyata Dehi Kaumaram Yauvanam Jara Tata Dehantara Prakti Dilasatra Namukyati Madras Parshasrukam Teya Shitoshna Sukha Dukha Dhamma Agama Vaino Nitya Tamsitikshasva Bharata Yamamina Vyatayantyete Purusham Purusharshabha Samadukha Sukham Dheeram Somritatmaya Kalpate Nasato Vidyate Bhavaha Nabhavo Vidyate Sataha Ukhayora Pidrishtontaha Tvamayoskatva Darshibhihi Om Sahana Vavadu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamaslumavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Three orders of reality form the basis of Vedanta Shastra. Yesterday we saw two of them. What is that? What are they? Sat and Mithya. And here in the 16th verse, Mithya is seen as Asat. Generally, what do we say? Asat means totally non-existence. And for that, there is a special word. What is that? No, that is Mithya. Anirvachaniyam, Mithya are one and the same. There is a special word. Satyam, Mithya and? Vyavahar. Vyavahar Yogya is Mithya. Yeah. Tucham. 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 Yeah. Tucham means Atyantika Abhava, means absolute non existence, is called Tucham. Satyam, Mithya, Tucham. Paramarthika, Vyavaharika, and yeah, no, no. Tucham is not Pratibhasika. In Vyavaharika, there are two kinds of uh, things here. Yeah. So, Paramarthika is called Sat, that which always is, that which does not change, 
that which does not undergo any modifications, sat. And then mithya, which is also called anirvachaniya, and then things like horns of the rabbit, circular shaped square, <laughs> ah. and other things come under the category of what is described as tuchan because the word asat in the shastra is variously used both for tucham and for mithya. So we are not going to use that term here because it's already been appropriated for mithya in this verse and in other Upanishads also we see that. And so these are the, this is the backbone of Vedanta. These are the vertebrae. Yeah. S1, Satyam 1, because it's one and only. <laughs> and then what? Mithya, MM, Mithya, many Mithyas. And then many Tuchams also. Yeah. And something cannot and does not, the existence of which is not at all a possibility, it is called Tucham. Like the walking stripes of a zebra. Zebra has been left behind. The stripes went for a walk. You know, that the stripes without the zebra, you know, it's like, a, that's what we say, Tucham, rabbit horn. You know, and this is like an iffy example, especially with scientific uh, uh, advances. What is that? The child of a barren woman. Vandhya Putraha. But now you can't use that because now we have in vitro and we have so many other things, you know. But that's why the Taitri Upanishads, to talk about this extreme non-existence, says that, you know, Eshaha. You know, here comes this fellow. Who is this fellow? He has bathed in the mirage waters. Freshly bathed in the mirage waters. And put vibhuti, I'm adding a few things to it. Put vibhuti from the, what? From the ashes of the unburnt coal. And then what else has he done? He has plucked the flower, you know, out of the akasha. Akasha starts to grow flowers, celestial flowers. He has plucked it, ke pushpa, shekharaha. So his, you know, head is adorned by a flower, fresh, fragrant flower that he just picked out of the sky and put in his little choti. And then who is he? Vandhya Putra. He has come out of a person who can never have children. So this is, you know, this is to show extreme, uh, you know, extreme asat which is called Tucham. Atyantika Abhava. So when it is Abhava means not only is it not there, like we say that, you know, flower is not in my hand, supposing, you know. That's not atyantika abhava. That is relative abhava. Flower is, but doesn't happen to be in my hand. It's in my lap. That's all. So the, the place has changed, but the thing itself is still there. So this is a relative abhava with mithya things. You know, mithya gets displaced all the time. And, uh, but when we talk about absolute non-existence, a term we have, you know, carefully and happily borrowed from the Vaisheshikas for our own purposes, absolute non-existence means the possibility of drawing a circular shaped square is not there. You can draw a square with rounded edges. You can draw a circle inside the square. You know, you can do other things, but you can not draw a square and a circle simultaneously at the same time. It's just not a possibility. So, so these are the three orders of reality. What is the vertebrae of Vedanta? Because without this, there is no Shastra at all. And what is the, what is, is, it, is it that I have to see in the three orders of, you know, reality? And the three orders is here. I mean, we also say Pratibhasikam, but we are not going to, you know, look into that right now. Satyam, Mithya, Tucham. Tucham is easy. Nobody gets confused about Tucham. Very easy. You know, 
Nobody gets confused about Tujja. Are you missing the horns of the rabbit? No, why? Because it is not there. And nobody says, oh, I wish I had it. No. So, therefore, there is very little. Of course, if you had a special mind, perhaps it is possible to get confused with Tucham also. But generally speaking, it's not done. <laughs> you know, it's not possible to get confused about Tucham. So, what can you get confused about? Yeah, you know. Not, not even Sat. Uh, by itself, Sat is, Sat is what is and what doesn't change. Very straightforward definition. Sat also, by itself, you cannot get confused about. Now, Mithya is this, this intermediate reality is the one that is most problematic because it's neither here nor there. Nor, n- nor, nor is it absolutely existent or what? Absolutely non-existent. non-existent. Hanging in between like Trishanku. And this this hanging, you know, thing. Anything that hangs, not good. Yeah. <laughs> Even one of the American elections, because of those hanging pieces of paper, you know, was was called for the wrong person. Yeah on ballots. This is in the in the in one of the biggest first world countries. <laughs> so this is the situation. It it is left hanging between this sat, you know, and this absolute non existent. Because both are absolute. This one is absolutely existing. This is absolutely not existing. So absolutely there cannot be any confusion. Correct? Mm-hmm. However this middle fellow, which is neither absolute nor relative, and uh, that also, you know, with difficulty we can, uh, um, what's the word for it, uh, delineate and define and what not. The problem is it gets mixed up in the absolute. It should stay in the middle, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when no one is looking, it creeps over to the side of Sat. And then it looks to the left, looks to the right. No one is looking, it creeps over a little more. Then it looks furtively again and creeps over. And before you know it, it gloms onto Sat, like super glue. Why does this happen? That's why the relative's Dukkha, what happens to the relative Dukkha? becomes absolutely terrifying, you know, because it has gone and glommed on to Sat. And the relative fear becomes absolutely unbearable because it has gone and embraced Sat. Why does this happen? Why does this mix-up happen? Of course, being Vedantins, we can say because of Ajnana. But that cannot be a reason for everything, you know. Why did you eat lunch today? Because of Ajnana. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that cannot be the explanation for everything. And Adi Shankara says to us that you have to go deeper here. And this is a very fantastic Bhashya. If you get past the block of what he is trying to say, you know, because uh, it is said in a very, it's, it's said in the 5th century BC language. Correct? And thanks to Pujya Swamiji who has made it crystal clear, he has updated the, you know, Adi Shankara app, so that all of us can, can use it and not be confused. So when I start re- reading the Bhashya, we, we may not do that today, you are forewarned. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to not get into the block of direct translations, mm-hmm. because I'll read you the translation and you can see how far you will go. You know, you'll feel like getting up and going right now. And then you have to be honest with me and let me know if that's what you felt <laughs> when I read this. <laughs> um, in all cases, there is the experience of two awarenesses, the awareness of reality and the awareness of unreality. That is, in relation to 
to which the awareness does not change is called real and that in relation to which it changes is called unreal. Therefore, the, distinguish, the distinction between the real and the unreal is dependent on awareness which is of two kinds and then therefore in all cases of, uh, in all cases everyone has two kinds of awarenesses which is dependent on awareness um, with regard to the same substratum. Uh, the pot is real, the cloth is real, the elephant is real, he is not like saying the, uh, the lotus is blue. This is how it happens everywhere. Of these two awarenesses, the awareness of pot is not, a co is not constant and has, to be sh has, has been shown above. Where above, I don't know. And, uh, but the awareness of reality is not inconstant, you know. Therefore, the object of the awareness of the pot is unreal because of inconstancy, but not so the object of the awareness of the real, re reality. Why? Because of its constancy. Did you feel like getting up and going? No. 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 I'm just waiting. No, it's fine. Yeah, I didn't have to go. My mind was So, mind went, correct? That's what it is, you know. It's a faithful translation. The translation is not wrong, but the words that are used, the choice of the words, you know, needs a little upgrading. That's what it is, you know. And so here, we, that's why this we, I'm spending time in the background and I'm going to summarize it in such a way that when we read through the Bhashya, it's going to be like a walking over a cake. Although I don't know why anyone wants to walk over a cake. Why is it called cake walk? It was an old, like, yes. fair thing. Quite. People would walk around waiting for the music to stop. Yeah. And, and somebody okay. would be the, the winner and get a cake. Ah. Oh. Oh. Cake is the prize for the walk. Mm. Yeah. Ah. It was also a dance. Yeah, oh. a dance. Okay. Not on the cake. No. Okay. <laughs> it was yeah. a dance called cake walk. Okay, oh. dance oh. called cake. Yeah. In the 1800s. Okay. Oh. So in that case, it is cake ascha, so walk ascha. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and, and then in this case, it is the walk, you know, for which the subject matter is cake. Correct. Yeah. Dottie says it was dizzying. Huh? Says it was dizzying. It was Correct. Dizzying. Yeah, that's what it is. It is that the bhashya can give you chakkar. <laughs> so, this is why we have to have this conversation beforehand. So why does this, this fellow who is supposed to be in the middle, neither here nor there, we have already defined mithya, pot, you know, neither is it, you know, non-existent. You cannot say it's non-existent because it makes noise. See, I showed you yesterday. If you say it's non-existent, it's going to make a big noise. And if you say it's existence, it's, it's false because clay is going to say, ah -ha, come on, you know, who is upholding the pot? Me, correct? And so therefore, if it is neither existent nor non-existent, and yesterday we also found out that mithya depends on satyam, that was established. Just as the pot depends on clay, clay does not depend on pot for it to have a good time. Or it does not say, how many pots have I made so that I can gain approval. It does not care. So therefore, this one-sided relationship between sat and mithya gives us a clue as to why Mithya keeps jerking itself and going on this side and then glomming on to Sat because it rides on Sat for its expression. So it's not doing the wrong thing because there is really speaking, you know, there is just, how many Sats are there? So all the Mithyas make a beeline for Sat. Like the gopis to Krishna, one Krishna was there. One poor Krishna, millions, teeming millions of gopis. All of them wanted to play this, you know, stick dance. And this is actually a metaphor. One sat, Krishna, Karshati, that which draws its everything unto itself. And so many gopis you know, representing Mithya and all the gopis feeling incomplete without this Sat. This is really what it is. And then 
when they really prayed for this sat to come and stand next to them krishna would be dancing with them and then it looked to the people sitting in the audience that there were as many krishnas as there were gopis in other words sat is like that story krishna in that story as many mithyas sat morphs into that many avataras without undergoing any change this is what it is without undergoing any change so the awareness you cannot say awareness of sat it's like saying head of rahu awareness that is sat this consciousness this awareness can be seen from a two fold standpoint from a standpoint which does not shift does not change from itself this consciousness exists yes or no yes, yes. how do you know i am here <laughs> yeah this con- this consciousness exists that is the first thing about sat this consciousness is not other than me it is because it is recognized and since this consciousness blesses every other existent thing in the universe it is limitless so the consciousness exists the consciousness is conscious of itself it's self conscious and it everything becomes evident to it all objects become evident to it or to the is that is consciousness and then since it sustains everything nothing can have can be said to have a being without riding on this consciousness it is called ananta so satyam sat and then yeah no chit ananta ananda this is what it is so from this threefold standpoint this consciousness alone is and it's not morphed into anything but the various things objects it lends its existence to various objects without undergoing any change just like the sun lights up the universe without undergoing any change without having any action even though you say sun shines the shining of the sun is not an action it's its nature swarupa so the consciousness is sat consciousness shines blesses everything chit consciousness you know upholds everything and upholds and accommodates every single thing in the universe this is what is called sat then what about this the first order of reality what about mithya has no leg we saw this yesterday but just to sum up has no leg to stand on without consciousness it is indebted heavily to consciousness will never be able to repay it just like pot is indebted to clay it um, depends its entire being depends on clay entire being depends on clay there is nothing that is pot other than clay nama and rupa big deal that's why after the 6th chapter we have the 7th chapter of the uh, chandogya upanishad yesterday we saw the 6th chapter 7th chapter what happens narada, narada. where does he go sanat kumar he wants to teach sanat kumar right no he wants to learn from sanat kumar one of the people directly taught by lord dakshinamurthy and he says you know i know a lot he himself says and he is not lying he does know a lot he says but still so hum he doesn't mean so hum as in brahman i am he says i am this fellow who knows a lot bhagavah shochami i am subject to grief same thing ashochyan anushochastva 
<laughs> I'm subject to grief, he himself says. And you know, unlike other people, he cannot come and attend a Vedanta class. The more you know, the less you are able to attend classes. Because there is this pride, there is this shame. Oh my God, people think I know, so I should not be in class. Because if I'm in class, they'll, they'll think I don't know. So I will not attend. But still I have this problem. I'm subject to grief. What to do? So he creeps upon the Guru after class. Uh, I just had a question. What? I am this fellow. They call me Narada. I know a lot, a whole lot. And I have pursued knowledge relent relentlessly, knowledge of so many things. And still show Jami. But I have heard that you know something that I don't. Maybe that's the last thing to master. And uh, till now I did not, could not muster up the courage to do this. Now I'm telling you, I really don't know this. Shokasya param tarayatu. So bring me the boat of this knowledge and take me across this ocean of samsara. And Sanat Kumara says, all right, we'll begin classes right away. But first I have to know what you know. Because should I start with Vedanta 001? You know? Baby Vedanta, A for Atma, B for Brahman, C for Chit, D for Dharma. Should I start there? <laughs> or can I go straight away to Sat Chit Ananda? Where are you spanning? So tell me what you know, so that I can get an idea of where you've been. When he rattles off, putting a rattlesnake to shame, and he says, I know Yajur Veda, Rig Veda, the other two Vedas, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Chandasam, Jyotisham, everything I know. I know this, I know Dhanur Vidya, Nakshatra Vidya, you know, Shastra Vidya, Astra Vidya, Ayur Veda, this Veda, that Veda, Upa Veda, this Veda, you know. I know all the about the galaxies, Nakshatra Vidya, I know everything. Sanat Kumar starts to laugh. He can't stop himself. What? You only ask what all I know. I'm just telling you. I know a lot. And Sanat Kumara says, that is truly spoken by you, my dear fellow. You know a lot of nothing. <laughs> yes. How much is a lot of nothing? Nothing. A little bit of nothing? Nothing. So in other words, you don't know anything. So Mithya is like that. And this we are seeing in the Bhashya of the Mundakopanishad also. That Mithya knowledge is a lot of nothing. It's like, you know, knowing every discrete thing in the universe without knowing its being. Its very being one doesn't know. And one just takes the name and the form and plays with the name and the form endlessly as though it is real. And when the toy breaks, one starts to cry. <laughs> You know, toy is equal to relationship, toy is equal to so many things. Everything is a toy from the standpoint of Sat. So therefore, we saw this yesterday. So then Mithya is that which has no being without Sat. So we have seen this so many times. Yesterday also we saw flower is. The isness belongs to what? Sat. Not the flower. Isness belongs to Sat. And pot is. Isness in the relatively belongs to clay. Absolutely, when you even when you say pot is, cloth is, shirt is, fabric is, the isness belongs to sat. Sat is. Where does the isness belong? Sat. Isness rests with sat. Doesn't go beyond sat. So if this much is understood, then we can go to a very interesting point. And this interesting point doesn't have to do with uh, the three gradations, satyam, mithya, tucham, per se, but it has to do with the perception of sat and the perception of mithya. Yeah. So when I, you know, who is this I? Already a mix-up of sat and mithya. The one I call, the one that calls itself, himself, herself, Aham is a curious mix-up of Satya and Mithya. Correct? 
and also here the Ajnanam is complete. Why? Because I take the Mithya, such as the body, the mind, the senses to be Sat. But none of them are Sat. Why is the body not Sat? We are Vicharatvat. Yeah. It ages as you are looking at it. And you think the, the wrinkle is the crack in the mirror, so you try to wipe off the mirror. You know, but actually as you are looking at the mirror, the aging is happening to the skin, to the body. As you are walking, what happens? Osteoporosis is happening. As you are running, muscle atrophy is happening. As you are talking, memory blanking is happening. <laughs> you see? So the body cannot be sat. Why? Because it is not self-existent. It is an object of Sat. It's not Sat. See, here when I say object of Sat, I not only mean it's Mithya, but even from the standpoint of the observer, it is, it is an object. So this is what it is. So now we have to look at this perception. And from the standpoint of the perception again, I say my senses, and I have a lot of pride. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm the eyewitness. I'm this, I'm that. I heard it with my own ears. Is sound sat? Yes. Ah, hmm, yes. No. Make a sound. Let's find out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> is sound sat? Yes. Why? Everything is. Yes. Sound is not sound. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds sad. Yes. Am I making a sound point? Yes. yes. Ultimately, no. Relatively, yes. is sound sad? Yes. Ultimately, yes. everything is sad. Yes. Sound is sad? Relatively, no. Relatively, yes. No. What is sound? Mithya. Why is it Mithya? Because it has not. Because I can object. Yes, because I can hear it. Now, what about your ears? Ears hear the sound. Is it sad? Ah. Ah. That is also not Sat. So, is a sound a sound unless it is heard? No. Sound is not a sound unless it is heard. Correct? If it's not heard, it has another name called silence. <laughs> so, a sound is not a sound unless it is heard. Okay? So the sound depends on the sense organ called ears. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now the ears, this is a senseless point, but this, the thing is, how do the ears get established as a sense organ? Because of what? Power of sound. Behind sound. Because of sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sound gets established as existent because of the ears. Mm -hmm. Ears get established as you know, capable, worthy of being sense, called sense organs because they can sense sound. This is what is mithya. Anyonya ashraya. Yeah, each one clinging on to the other. The drowning man clings on to the log. And the log, the log responds by clinging back. And then he discovers that it's a bear that was also lost in the flood. This way Bhagavan economizes and answers both prayers at the same time. The man said, save me, O Lord. And the bear said, I can't bear it. I want something to hold on to. Bhagavan said, Tathastu once. And both of them glommed on to each other. Just like the ears glommed on to the sound, and the ears feel good whenever they hear. Ah, I'm working, says the sense organ called the ear. See, I can hear all subtle things. I can hear the traffic in Portland. So therefore, <laughs> therefore, I am doing very well. And the sound also makes a sound. And the sound says, ha, you see, I exist because I'm cognized. I have the power to disturb many ears. For many, many years I've been doing this. And so, this is what is called Anyonya Ashraya. The whole body is like that. Anyonya Ashraya. Mutual interdependence. 
Whole mithya is like that. Sometimes there is a mix up of cause and effect, cause and effect linking each other. And sometimes, like here, it's, it's a, it goes in a circle, which came first. That, that's why the Zen people have fun. When the redwood falls in the forest, is there a sound? You know, are there a pair of ears? You have to first ask, you know. So there can be no sound without ears, and no ears without sound. Without sound, ears cannot be called ears. This is fun. You know, the whole world is like that. You know, we, we, it's all just shaking. You know, each one is holding on to the other and don't think that they are better off because they are holding on to other. It's just that like the pack of cards, they will slowly fall. Yes, fall in the light of enquiry that we are making right now. So the mind also, same thing. Mind cognizes things. What cognizes the mind? You know, Sat. Again, so there is a whole cascading mithya with regard to this body-mind sense complex that is dependent upon the Sat. And out of this cascading, you know, huge deluge of mithya, the mind is a very, occupies a very interesting place from the standpoint of the individual perception of Sat and Mithya. Why should I care about the individual sat, uh, perception of Sat and Mithya? I have already delineated. You gave two lectures on say, practically saying this is Sat, this is Tucham, this is Mithya. That should be enough. I will put it, you know, on the mirror. So I will look at the definition and look at the things and decide not to be affected. Does it go like that? No. Because the affectation is happening without one's knowledge, as it were. Because the all the mithya things are riding on sat, and sat is also riding on sat. And since the sat happens to be I, we have to go to the individual perception from the standpoint of the individual perception of sat and the individual perception of mithya. We have to go from that and have a discussion of the, this standpoint because here is where the mix-up is taking place. This is the cause of sorrow. This is a brilliant point made by Adi Shankara. And out of what I read, this is what he says. He says, in every perception, there are two buddhis. Oh, I didn't even know I had one buddhi. <laughs> Where did the second one come from? With great difficulty I thought I had one buddhi. You know, where did this second one come from? Buddhi doesn't here mean intellect. Buddhi means pratiti. What is pratiti? Pratyaya, cognition. No, don't say suffix. That is a different, you know, yeah. That is a different discussion. So, pratiti means cognition, pratyaya. So in every, every cognition, in every perception, there are two cognitions or in every cognitions, there are two buddhis. You can take it like that, either way. So in every perception, there are two cognitions, two types of cognitions that are triangulating and operating together to, to make something evident to you. So when I say, for example, flower is, what are the two cognitions? Flower cognition and then what? Is cognition. Is cognition. But why should there be two cognitions? Yeah, that is why when anybody asks that questions, know that they are mixed up. <laughs> so the first thing Adi Shankara tells us to do is to be able to delineate the cognition, the two kinds of cognitions in the mind so that falsifying the fear and the sorrow gets a little easier. This is like a, you know, in class meditation kind of. 
So when there is no flower, you know, what are the cognitions? Have I locked the door? Um, should I continue to listen to this class? No, not those cognitions. Let's say the mind is quiet. What cognition is there? I am. I am. This is what Ramana Maharshi said. Get to the I thought. This is I thought. I doesn't need thought. I is there. Then that's why I said the mind has a very interesting place. Manaha eva manushyanam karanam moksha bandhayoho. The mind is the cause of bondage and freedom both. So here, I am, that am, am, am doesn't go away. That's why I keep asking the question, are you here? Yes, this is the self-existent consciousness, which is I, which is also the definition of Sat. <coughs> so I buddhi, not my buddhi, I buddhi means I cognition is Sat cognition, which is not an object cognition, which can be called subject cognition, but for now we are going to call it is cognition. I is, correct? Mm -hmm. No, but that's grammatically wrong, never mind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything is. I also here is qualified by is. Body is because I is. Mind is because I is. So everything that is in the body-mind-sense complex assemblage, that is part of the body-mind-sense complex assemblage, depends on is. That is, is that which never goes away. So this is called Sat-buddhi, Sat-buddhi, Is-buddhi. Is-buddhi. Is, 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 is. Always that is buddhi is there. Sometimes the is buddhi is there as object is. Other times the is buddhi is simply there as I is. That which is self-lit, self-aware. And then, so that is the first buddhi called sad buddhi is cognition. Which is the same as I cognition. And then we have, what is the second buddhi? The second buddhi is the cognition of various objects that rise, ride on, rise from, collapse into just that one is. Same cognition, various forms. All of them ride on that same cognition. So the second buddhi is a vyabhichari buddhi. What is vyabhichari buddhi? Changeling buddhi. Changing buddhi. Pot is quickly it takes on the form of pot this particular cognition. That's how pot is cognized. Pot is thought is mat, hat, rat, cat. Is, 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 elephant is, horse is, I. When you say I, the buddhi immediately switches. Yeah. From object buddhi to is buddhi. So what we need to know is that in the object awareness, there are two buddhis operating. In the awareness of isness itself or the awareness of I, there is only one buddhi operating, mm -hmm. one cognition. So everything, there, is, there are two buddhis operating. To explain this further, when you say flower is, when I say pot is, even before I go and show the pot, what has happened? Pot buddhi has already come. Where is the pot buddhi? happily sitting in the head, unaware. Oh, is she going to show the small one, the medium-sized one or the large one? Surprise! Me lo ghataha, blue pot. So pot buddhi was little taken aback, because those that saw me reaching out for this were expecting this. Little did we know that there was this fellow here. Correct? 
and then what came out was this. So the pot buddhi that was wanting to see that one, expecting to see that one, had already shaped and was sitting here. And then quickly, what did it do? It it rubbed that out and replaced this. <laughs> Imagine this happening inside. <laughs> or you can take like this. It doesn't matter <laughs> wherever the cognition is taking place. So it, it, it rubbed it out, erased it, you know. It's almost like the buddhi was writing the, the, the form of the pot laboriously. And as it was coloring in, coloring the brown color in, quickly it saw, it, it did a double take and said, oh, this is indeed a surprise, shape is different, color is different, where did this come from? So quickly it put in blue color and changed the shape a little bit and, you know, dusted itself off as though it was not sleeping on the job. <laughs> Correct? It corrected itself. And then I show you this pot. Yeah, a trusty pot, crack pot, we know this pot. We don't even need to write it in because we bring the Xerox from last time. <laughs> so many times we have seen it. There is a 3D Xerox sitting there from the 3D printer and that is just brandished here. You know, no problem. And supposing I see a new pot that I have never seen before, then, uh, you know, the buddhi says, wait a minute, show that again, let me see that again. Okay, and draws it and then files it away. May not remember, but files it away. Correct? So even before I say pot, some kind of pot buddhi, you know, this, this buddhi of objects is so obliging that it mounts up a, some picture immediately. This is called vyabhichari, you know, buddhi, pot cognition or, you know, object cognition. And then what? Mithya buddhi because it is used to cognize mithya. But we have always said that Mithya is married to Satyam. Satyam doesn't uh, consider itself married to Mithya. It's a one-sided marriage. Satyam says, I'm divorced from everything. <laughs> Mithya says, I'm married to you. <laughs> this is what, this is how it is. It's like the fan following of so many film stars. People imagine all kinds of things with film stars. They say, oh, you know, half my marriage has taken place with this famous film star. One man said, how? When did you meet he her? Never met her. Oh, email, SMS, no. Then how do you say half the marriage has taken place when you've never had any contact? I have decided to marry her. <laughs> what about her? She doesn't even know of my existence. Sat is naturally divorced from everything. Mithya has a codependent relationship with Sat. Sat is not an enabler. Really. Such is simply is. So here in these two cognitions, the part cognition is there, correct? And the part cognition is married to is cognition. Because I can't just say part. I have to say part, asti, asti, asti. This part na nasti, that part asti, little correction. Asti, 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 asti. So this buddhi called asti, uh, asti buddhi, asti buddhi keeps saying is, is, is. It's just got one note to play. Is, 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 is. It's a monotonous buddhi, monotone. The other buddhi, the other cognition is very colorful. Cloth, pot, hat, cat, mat, rat. It is sounding like a... You know, kindergarten doctor, mm -hmm. what is there? Some doctor Dr. book. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss book. Cat in the rat, you know? You know, rat in the cat, hat, <coughs> mat, fat, all these things are what? These are all this vyabhichari cognition of objects. So the object cognition and then is cognition. Sad buddhi is cognition, asad buddhi, what, what he calls object cognition. Mm -hmm. The two in tandem create for us this whole perception of wonderful names and wonderful forms. And so what is the problem? So far so good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. Mm. The problem is that the is-buddhi is not delineated at all. 
the asad buddhi like the crow who infiltrated the annual peacock convention masquerades as the sad buddhi the is in the in the sentence pot asti asti joins pot and becomes linked to it in one's perception so that when the pot goes away one sheds tears mm-hmm. mm. because the asti has gone and joined this thing so in other words in every cognition there is an invariable thing an invariable cognition a cognition that always is and then there is a variable aspect of this cognition so there is an invariable i can't even say aspect or part from one standpoint the cognition is variable and this variable cognition depends on the cognition that is invariable so like when i say pot is and then i see the pot bye bye pot hello pot bye bye pot then i say thought is hello thought how are you thought bye thought cat is hello cat goodbye kitty and then mat is hello mat goodbye mat this this transactional cognitions are always changing and the mind is very quick it goes from frame to frame to frame but then it ends up framing you because <laughs> even though it quickly goes from frame to frame it attributes erroneously the isness which is invariable on to the variable names and forms because really there is only one is but if the invariable isness is attributed to the varying names and forms what happens i i think of multiple isis multiple isis you can only have multiple choice quizzes you cannot have multiple isis there's only one is and when that is is when i see the real in the unreal you know there's another verse similar to this in chapter 4 you know karmani akarma yaf pashyet you know so like that so when i see the unreal in the real the real gets goes out of the window the unreal becomes real mithya becomes satyam and hence the cause of great grief and great sorrow this is really the crux of the whole bhashya what we talked about today what we talked about today three kinds of realities and then what else that this is from the huh what was it yeah so from the standpoint of from the standpoint of the reality there are three kinds and then it's important to trace the same satyam and mithya cognition from the standpoint of the individual perception because the individual the truth of the individual the truth of the perceiver and the isness are not different so the subject buddhi the is buddhi is equal to the subject buddhi so in every cognition there are two kinds of things happening one is the variable buddhi that goes after every object that is perceived sensed through the eyes etc ityadi and what does that buddhi do take on the form of what is perceived so in every thought there are two cognitions thought and then what aha that is we have converted to i now you have to graduate a little bit so that is loses the s you know some low part takes place and <laughs> yeah you know alantyam so low part takes place and what remains is i this is the next level so do for cognitions initially what we say is cognition and object cognition asad buddhi object cognition sad buddhi is cognition and the sad buddhi is revealed no surprise as i so in every in every cognition there are two things one is invariable which is i without me there is no cognition i am that sat 
which uh, upon which all cognition depends and i am invariable and on this vast canvas of this invariable sad buddhi is put what various little paint you know palettes and little colors and etc etc magic ink because the ink even though it's displayed on this does not taint the canvas the canvas remains pristine free of all the things that it perceives so when the is buddhi slash i buddhi when the is buddhi says i am sad that's a misperception so the is buddhi is actually what is saying i am observing some tears some fears and the i buddhi says yesterday when i was really happy also i was not connected to that i was the observer today also as the tears flow i am the observer i know that nothing is wrong everything is okay so the i buddhi is really the is buddhi the is buddhi resolves in the i the i resolves in nothing the i never resolves so in every thought in every perception there are two forms of cognition i am therefore this thing is so in other words whatever the thing that is being cognized or corrected in the mind because of its shape and size are wrong than what was initially perceived even though that correction is going on all the time and it's being calibrated to what is being shown it is all happening because the i is this changeless entity avyabhichari no change in the i vyabhichari variable avyabhichari invariable there is no vikara no modification in the i so the perceiver calls the shots and unfortunately if the perceiver doesn't know this the perceiver identifies mistakenly with what is perceived how do you do that because the invariable is so accommodative that it even perceives you know sorrow yes there is sorrow sorrow is and sat is very accommodative ignorance says agnyanam says come join me okay sat shines the light on agnyanam agnyanam is and anyatha gnanam wrong perception comes and calls on sat come to my party okay sat simply is it just shines the light on everything that has existence without really revealing the fact that and this is something that is why we need vedanta to understand that even though sat shines the light on everything that all the things that are shining are shining in the borrowed light of sat which doesn't need any of those things so in and through each and every variable thing the one who say, sees the invariable is the tatva darshi tatva darshin because all there is is the invariable the variable is exactly that which comes and goes the cat is replaced by hat perception nothing sticks otherwise you will be seeing the cat wearing the hat and then you see the elephant on top of the hat and then you see the flower on top of the elephant because if this is how you saw saw things in perception and if everything was sticking to sat the is buddhi is constantly erasing all the perceptions see how it is is fantastic that's why i can see numerous objects and not get affected by them they don't linger in the mind immediately they are cleansed so that the mind is fresh to see this again this is what is the effect of is buddhi is buddhi takes on the shape and the form you know of that particular thing is it lends itself and then it resolves back to itself then it lends itself to another thing it it broadcasts it and then it resorts back it swe mahimni tishtati tishtati means stays in what in its own glory mahima it doesn't need to borrow you know to look good a few more you know objects because it is verily the truth of the subject so in every co- cognition by the subject 
there is the presence of the subject and the presence of the object there is the cognition of the subject and the cognition of the object the cognition of the object is dependent upon the subject the cognition of the subject is also subjective to is subject to, to the subject alone the cognition of the subject is not dependent upon the object so these two cognitions you know go in tandem to light up the whole world of is what about is not <laughs> Is. is not is yeah absence is because I is and the I is never absent Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari hi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari hi Om Swamiji is stays in its own glory. This is Asanga. Mm, yeah, it stays it by itself it is glorious. It is in its own glory because it is Asanga. Definitely. I think Prasanti mistyped something that um it says M J N N K M V. I think it might be a mistyping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just thought I'd say it in case there was something that was supposed to go in. Nothing else has come. So. And Kate says pronouns. Oh, sorry, please ignore it. Hands are pressing. Yeah. The cat here to go to heavy stuff but important it's so it's really interesting in terms of this looking at it this way with the two buddhis yes because in in um, in some parlance and you know in in what we hope people will learn and this is outside of Vedanta if you're working with a therapist or something Mm. like that Mm. there's always this attitude of before you react take a step back. Yeah. Remove yourself from yeah. what that is. Yeah. And so if there was a clear understanding of is buddhi, yes. and then the other... Is not buddhi or whatever, yeah, then, object. Then that taking a step back yeah. becomes automatic. Yes, but it's here, the taking a step back is to watch the mind, yes. to watch the psychological order, but the mind itself is a product. Yes. You see? Yes. So that is very useful. But here, the step back into the witness, the subject, the sakshi of all. Because everything is everything, an object. Yeah, everything object. is an object. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, the psychology stops where it starts to deify the mind. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Some goodies, huh? What is this? Swamiji, this one is from Sudama Swamiji. <laughs>